Welcome to Magic Arcanum. I'm Ryan Gomez. Behind the scenes is Nicole Burdick, and we're so glad you're here because it's story time. Welp, the leaves are changing, the temperature is dropping, and pumpkin spice lattes are everywhere you look. That can only mean one thing. The fall season is here, and to celebrate, today I'm sharing my 10 favorite falls in all of magic. This one is going to be a lot of fun, but before we get into it, I should tell you about Into the AM and their new fall collection. I just love what they have added to their store this time around. They've launched great color selections of their pullover hoodies, Henleys, and button-ups. I've also had a chance to wear their joggers, and they might be the most comfiest pants I've ever owned. They've also got their not-so-normal graphic tees and other bestsellers all here. Go check out Into the AM if you want to upgrade your wardrobe and elevate your style a bit. They have basic tees for a minimal look, and their graphic tees are there if you want to stand out. Click the link in the description for a 10% discount, and remember, they also have packs. So if you're planning to buy a bunch, you'll save more, as it stacks with my coupon code, Magic Arcanum. So yeah, check out our sponsor Into the AM and pick out something from their fall collection while we count down my favorite fall cards in Magic the Gathering. All right, now, first of all, what counts as a fall card? Well, put simply, it must have the word fall in the title. I'm not even going with autumn here, even if that would give me like 10 more cards to pick from. No, we're just doing fall because it's fall. The rules are that simple. The premise is that perfect. Ready? Here we go. In 10th place is Fall of the Imposter from Kaldheim. This was the first set to make story spotlights out of sagas, and Fall of the Imposter portrays Tybalt being soundly defeated by the Planeswalkers Kaya and Tyvar. The only problem here is that the final verse exiles a creature, which is almost never going to actually hit Tybalt, so it's not a great fall, but it is a great way to start my list. In ninth place is Fall from Favor, an aura from Commander Legends. Pauper is one of my favorite formats. You can only use commons in your deck, but you still have access to some incredibly powerful and iconic cards from across the game's history. Even Counterspells and Lightning Bolts couldn't keep up with Fall from Favor, though. At just three mana, it was an incredibly cheap way to introduce the Monarch mechanic to your match, and then the blue player would just sit there drawing extra cards every turn until they amassed a huge advantage over their opponent. It might be hard to believe, but this harmless-looking aura is actually on the Pauper Band list now, which is the type of fun trivia that makes it one of my favorite falls. Eighth place goes to Atraxa's Fall from March of the Machine. Atraxa was a Phyrexian character introduced in a commander deck, a supplementary product that doesn't get a lot of story support. Even so, players were fascinated by her existence and delighted to see her show up again years later in a standard set and participating in the main storyline. Players were equally disappointed by her sudden demise in that story when the citizens of New Capenna collapsed a portion of their own metropolis onto the corrupted angel while dropping pithy one-liners. The salt on the wound was that this entire event was basically captured on a sideboard card for your March of the Machine limited deck, and it didn't even get tagged as a story spotlight, which left a lot of fans thinking Atraxa deserved better. For seventh place, we jump over to the original Ravnica block and find Rise and Fall from Dissension. If you're unfamiliar with split cards, they each have their own name and can be cast individually. Later, we would get the technology to fuse the two halves together into one single spell, but at this point, in 2006, you had to pick one side or the other. The right half here is literally just called Fall. So, of course, I had to include it on my list of favorite falls, right? The fact that it's a Rakdos spell is even better, because I've always had a soft spot for those little performing weirdos. Fall is a fun bit of chaotic magic. 
your opponent reveals two cards at random and then discards any non-lands shown this way, which can definitely derail their strategy at almost any point in the game. You might think it's the Selesnia that are the closest to nature, but no, it's the Rakdos poets who elegantly capture the sensation of leaves dropping from a tree. Okay, maybe in their version the leaves scream all the way down, but still. Anyway, the art from Magic's early days was really something special, and we pay tribute to that with my number six card, The Fallen, from The Dark, the game's fourth set release. The Fallen were actually mages from Dominaria who suffered the mind-destroying effects of mana burn. That's right, a game mechanic was represented in the story and actually had repercussions for characters who experimented with magic they didn't fully understand. Wild stuff, I know. The flavor text here is also on point, serving as a cautionary tale, not just for careless wizards, but for any of us who become slaves to our own devices. But of course, when we get too close to having an actual moral in this game, we have to throw it away for a cheap pun. Now, I'm not against magic being a little silly from time to time. It is a game after all, and it should be fun. Which brings me to my number five card, Stand or Fall from Invasion. This four mana enchantment adds a little mini game to each of your combat steps. You get to split your opponent's creatures into two piles, and then they get to pick which one of those piles will be allowed to block this turn. At its core, magic is largely about playing mind games with your opponent, and having a way to do that every turn for free is just hilarious to me. Now, to be fair, this does slow games down a lot, and many times the choices here won't even really matter because you weren't going to attack anyway, or your opponent only has one blocker they wanted to use, so don't jam this in your next commander deck unless you want to be the table's villain. Aside from all that, though, it's a cool card and mechanically captures the idea of some creatures being brave enough to stand through combat while others fall and run for safety. But you will find no safety from my next card, which is Fall of the Thran from Dominaria. This rare saga blows up everyone's lands and then allows players to slowly rebuild from the rubble, and it's meant to tell us the story of the Thran Empire. They were an ancient and advanced civilization that existed long ago in Magic's timeline. In the present day, their relics and artifacts litter the landscape and have influenced the course of history across Dominaria. Yogmoth and the Phyrexians come from this era, and there was even a book that explored the infighting that ultimately led to their downfall, but I prefer to see them as a mysterious source of untold treasures still waiting to be discovered. Fall of the Titans from Oath of the Gatewatch is in third place, and it shows two legendary Eldrazi on the receiving end of the Gruul Friends. Chandra and Nyssa worked together along with the rest of the Gatewatch to defend Zendikar from these plane-devouring monstrosities, which may or may not still have multiverse-wide consequences, depending on which Elder Dragon you ask. For players, though, it meant the start of the Gatewatch era, in which we would mostly follow a core group of planeswalkers as they tackled problems while trying to live up to their own individual oaths. Love it or hate it, Magic's popularity grew substantially during this time frame, and we saw many creative projects that looked to capitalize on the familiar roster of characters. Many of those projects never actually went anywhere, but for like one week in 2019, we thought we had an animated Netflix show and an MMORPG, so life was pretty sweet. Plus, you know, now we still have pancakes and uh, Hot Pockets. Anyway, in second place, the silver medal, we have Tragic Fall from Modern Horizons 2. Removal spells depicting the banana peel of death are basically their own genre at this point, and I'd rather put the original tragic slip up here, but this is a list of falls and not slips, so this one will have to do. I feel like Tragic Fall is supposed to be a playful nod to its predecessor, but it kind of, well, falls flat, if you will. You see, Slip played on Innistrad's morbid mechanic and the constant references to Triskaidekaphobia, or the fear of the number 13. 
The art was an inspired bit of dark comedy with a hapless citizen falling into an open grave. Literally a tragic slip. Perfect. No notes. I guess that card was just a bit too powerful though as it was pretty easy to unlock the mode that killed angels and demons for just one mana. So Tragic Fall was supposed to be a more fair execution of the same idea. Unfortunately, the art no longer has that whimsical composition and the use of the hellbent mechanic completely changes the feeling of the whole thing. It's no longer about death begetting more death, which itself is a tragic loop. Nope, now it's about someone intentionally pushing you off a building that was already breaking apart by the looks of it, while the flavor text dryly reminds us that your final journey will start with a misstep which implies it's the creature's fault, but you're the one who had to empty your hand to begin with. Amazingly, even with all of that going on, Tragic Slip makes it so high on the list because it does show somebody falling, and it's a pretty playable card, and it reminds me of the original Tragic Slip. But if you want to disagree with me, you can fall down into the comments. So that leaves us with number one, the best fall card. Absolutely, no question. It is Vraska's Fall from Phyrexia All Will Be One. I've mentioned in the past how she was one of my favorite characters and her corruption at the hand of the Phyrexian oil felt like a personal loss. It was an intense moment of the story that led to other intense moments of the story, all depicted on a reasonably useful instant that captures Vraska's lethality, even in her final moments. Even though it hurt me to see her go, I was glad to see her take others down with her during the fall, which makes this my favorite fall card. But what about you? Got something I left off the list? Let me know in the comments, and remember to check out my link for Into the AM while you're down there. Grab yourself something from their new fall collection. Save 10% with my coupon code during checkout. Then make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the great stories you'll only find here on Magic Arcanum. We'll see ya.